Shalom. Kohalayla Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Rekonkadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh. In the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad and double honor and respect to the elders, to the apostles of great millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. Trust in the spirit that woke us up. So the same spirit that breathed into us life is the same spirit that is going to be our guiding light and hedge of protection. So if we have this truth, if we have access to this knowledge and understanding, these are signs and we are following the right steps, the right path. Let's go to the book of Psalms 37, verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighted in his way. So we're not following our own way, but we're being piped pipe by the spirit and power and will of a divine force. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. So there's no need to fear what man can do if we're following our protection, our strength, and our might. Go to verse 24. Though he fall, Psalms 37 and 24. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. So the Bible says, though they seem to die in the sight of the unwise, yet are they at peace. And I'm paraphrasing. So yes, we're going to suffer affliction and persecution, but these are only strengthening phases. These are stepping stones by which to be elevated. So we're already winning by having this wisdom, having the understanding of the divine. Let's go here to verse 25. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. So that bread starts with this knowledge. So wisdom leads to strength and might, leads to security and peace, and everything else follows suit afterwards. Dwelling in a kingdom of rest, being at the top or elevated, so that protection or that hedge is embodied in this knowledge that we have obtained. So this is not man's wisdom, but it comes from the Heavenly Father that cannot be trumped, subdued, or trampled underfoot. So this is the strength and power that we are following through the gift of faith. I have been young and now am old, yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is blessed. So the righteous are going to inherit eternal rulership, peace, rest, and dominion and power over the nations. So that bread starts with wisdom, and then it leads to living luxuriously or living plenteously being fattened up, so to speak, like King Solomon, like the nobles in the days of old under the Davidic dynasty. Let's go here to the book of Psalms. <laughs> the book of Psalms, chapter 105, 
verse 13. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake. So this information, this doctrine, puts the Lord's people on a level above nations, above governments. An ambassador has been sent to these nations, to these heathen. So this is a position of authority that we are speaking from. Does not the Bible say where the word of the king is? Let's get that real quick. <clears throat> Proverbs 8. Ecclesiastes. I don't know why I went to Proverbs. Let's try Ecclesiastes. Okay, yeah. Ecclesiastes 8 and 4. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, and a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. So the elect are understanding that this is a changing of the guard. A new season is being ushered in, and no great kingdom is going to fall peacefully or transition peacefully. There's going to be tribulation, turmoil, upsetting the current balance of power. That's what's happening. So the elect are going to be safeguarded and guided along the path of protection. Let's keep going. <clears throat> Psalms 105, verse 14. He's... <laughs> Excuse me. He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sakes, saying, Touch not mine anointed, and do my prophets no harm. Moreover, he called for a famine upon the land. He brake the whole staff of bread. And this happened in ancient Egypt, but we know through the Spirit, history repeats itself. It's going to happen in spiritual Sodom in Egypt. A famine is underway. The dollar is collapsing. It's 55 units to every one dollar. So the dollar is going to be rendered worthless. So this system that was strengthened through military might being the hammer of the earth is going to be brought down by violence, the same way that it built itself up through its blessing, the sword. Let's go to Sirach 33 and 1. There shall no evil happen unto him that feareth the Lord, but in temptation, even again, he will deliver him. So the Lord is going to keep his anointed through the great trial and temptations and tribulation that's going to come upon all the world. He is directing the mindset of the faithful, those that believe. So he is girding up our minds spiritually to be able to endure, building up our faith and building up our integrity to keep going. And this is why we pray and fast for strength for the days ahead, because the flesh cannot endure a spiritual battle that's going to try every aspect of our intestinal fortitude 
to go on. So it's going to take divine intervention to keep us from losing our mind. Is it not written? We'll go ahead and get it. I think it's, um, let's go to Isaiah 33. Book of Isaiah chapter 33, verse 5. The Lord is exalted, for he dwelleth on high. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness, and wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. So that strength is not man-made, but it is the power from a divine source that's going to guide the elect. Even with death being threatened, the guillotines threatening us. Gunfire threatening us. FEMA camps threatening us. Military troops in mass threatening us. Starvation threatening us. So it takes a spiritual enhancement to be able to face death and face desolation head on, face to face. Let's go to Psalms 34, verse 17. The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth, and delivereth them out of all their troubles. So the elect believe in this holy name and are going to be delivered that trust in his name and the doctrine and power behind his name. So if we believe in the product, we believe in the name that stands behind the product, which is this doctrine. See, let's go here to the book of Psalms, chapter 118, verse 5. I call upon the Lord in distress, the Lord answered me and set me in a large place. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do unto me. The Lord taketh my part with them that help me. Therefore shall I see my desire upon them that hate me. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. So that man is the carnal man that we're not putting confidence in, that's not walking in the spirit. Let's keep going. Psalms 34 and 18. The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. So the Lord is not going to forsake nor abandon those that love, fear, and trust him. Let's go into this word, contrite. Comes from the Hebrew. Strong's H, 1793. Dakar. Dakar. So here, dust. Contrite, dust, or destruction. Those that are meek and lowly. To be in the dust is a low state of confusion, brokenhearted. So it's talking about the meek and lowly. And the elect are receiving the doctrine in meekness and lowliness and don't have a stony heart. <laughs> Let's come here. Psalms 34 and 9. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. For there is no want to them that fear him. So that want, our vittles, our daily sustenance, our bread, our water, our shelter, our protection, are all embodied under the divine power that we serve. Did not Yahweh Shai, Shai say, the fowls of the air they don't worry about where they're going to get their next meal or where they're going to lay their nest. And I'm paraphrasing. Let's go to Psalms 34 and 10. The 
the young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Come ye, children, hearken unto me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. So what does this tell us? What can we extrapolate from this message? Power, wealth, protection, health, wellness, nutrition, nourishment, all starts with the fear of Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, his name and his word. Let's go to Psalms 34, verse 21. Evil shall slay the wicked, and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. The Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. The Lord is with us, those that fear his name and tremble at his word. Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai cannot lie and cannot fail. And no worm of a man is going to outdo the great power that we serve, the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Ask the ancient Egyptians. Ask the ancient Assyrians. <coughs> Let's keep going. Let's go to Jeremiah 15. Let's go to verse 10. Woe is me, my mother, that thou hast borne me a man of strife and a man of contention to the whole earth. I have neither lent or usury, nor men have lent to me on usury, yet every one of them doth curse me. So we are surrounded by our enemies on every side, starting with the two-thirds of the house of Israel. It's very easily to overlook the Afro-American two-third Negroes. It's very easy to overlook them. So whenever we're talking about the heathen, it starts with the house of rebels. The Israelites on the two-thirds are going to be cut off on this side. Let's go to verse 11. Jeremiah 15, verse 11. The Lord said, Verily, it shall be well with thy remnant. Verily, I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in the time of evil and in the time of affliction. So the wicked on the left hand or sinister side are controlled by the heavenly father through the spiritual demon Satan, the left hand of the most high. So they can only go but so far they have a limit of advance or lines that they cannot cross if they did not then all of israel would have been destroyed so a remnant a remnant according to the election of grace is going to be preserved signed sealed and delivered the sealing of the lord's elect Let's read that again. So this lesson is designed to boost or strengthen or increase our faith. Jeremiah 15, verse 11, the Lord said, Verily, it shall be well with thy remnant. Verily, I will cause the enemy to entreat thee well in the time of evil and in the time of affliction. Well, he makes even our enemies to check themselves, to control or contain themselves. Let's go to Proverbs 16. Right here. Proverbs 16 and 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. So who are we to fear other than the source of that terror? Is he not called 
the king of terror. Does not the Most High say, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. So why not fear the source of life, death, health, and sickness? Let's read that again. Proverbs 16 and 6. Let's go to by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So anyone treating a brother any kind of way or not teaching daily, they don't fear the Lord, they're not to be trusted. Sleeping with another man's wife consistently, ignoring the warnings or the said perils to come down. These men are evil evil to have to beg an individual to do a, a lesson they are evil just visualize Yahweh Shai's image his face was beat beyond recognition worse than Emmett Till but we got to beg an individual to do a lesson they're not to be trusted because they don't fear the Lord they're not moving with fear When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Better is a little with righteousness than great revenues without right. So the best thing we can do is fear our power and his name and trust in him and have or tremble at his word. He warned us to sound the alarm, to blow the trumpet, and warn them from me when I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die. If thou warn the wicked to save his life from his wicked ways, then his blood shall not be... Let's go ahead and get it because I just butchered it. So these are commandments to be preserved from the dangers and the tribulations that lie ahead. Tried to be lazy and quoted. And the spirit of the Lord calls me to make a fool out of myself. Let's close out here. Ezekiel 3 and 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, Hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. So this is moving with fearing the Lord, doing what he tell us to do to the best of our ability. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. So these are, the, the wicked here in this context is talking about the nation of Israel, but the elect are going to take heed to the warning. How do we know that? Well, let's go up. We go up to Ezekiel 3. Verse 7, but the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. So we still have a stiff-necked remnant or residue of the two-thirds. But the one-third remnant are going to take heed to the sound of the warning. Ezekiel 3 and 18. When I say unto the wicked, thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way to save his life, the same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require 
at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. So the elect can rest in this ministry, in this doctrine. When I say rest, having a spiritual peacefulness, wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our time. The fear of the Lord is his strength. So we're able to anticipate the next steps because we're walking by faith, not by sight. So we're not going to be surprised when the next play is called. Imagine having the playbook of your adversary, your opponent, knowing what the next plays are. So we're able to mentally prepare ourselves so we have faith and confidence. Confidence means with fidelity or with faith. Let's get one more. Romans 8, verse, let's go down to verse 15. Romans 8, verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. So spiritually drinking the fountains of living waters is staying grounded with this word. This is how we stay alive. This is our lifeline. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Why? Because we're not leaning on man's wisdom, the university system, the governmental structure, the man-made religious institutions, or philosophies and doctrines of men, science and technology. We're leaning on what we cannot see, and what we can't see is more powerful than what we can see in this physical earthly realm. But we're trusting on the most ancient of days, the Most High, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, through His Son, Yahweh Shai, our Savior. Hopefully, this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Akwakadash. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of great wisdom. Barakatham, see you on the next lesson. Lord willing, Kwam Yasharala and the Bad Babal, Barak Thumb. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom.